I messed up big time and I'm sure you have in the past or still are making these mistakes when repairing your engines at home. It's gonna cost you time, it's gonna cost you money and you're gonna get frustrated in the process. Hopefully this short video is gonna to bring to light these problems and help you avoid them in the future. We've all done it, so don't say you haven't. Over tightening hardware. Of course, we know the obvious things. We know that we can damage threads, we can strip them out, we can cross thread, we can snap bolts, we can damage things in the process. And then when we come to repair it, when we're drilling things out and retapping, we can create more problems as well. Well, they're the obvious things, we know that. Maybe less obvious though, is over talking certain hardware can actually cause parts to flex and then air leaks to occur. Of course, not just flexing it, we can damage things. I damaged a manifold a little while ago. I broke a flywheel, I cracked a flywheel. So stupid, I should never have done it. And yet it's just getting complacent in the process. Also, just bear in mind that most of the hardware that we're working on with small engines is M4, M5, M6, sometimes a little bit more. Most of that hardware needs to be just snug and then one eighth of a turn more. That's all you need. If you find certain circumstances where bolts and hardware are backing out, use a little bit of Loctite. But I can almost guarantee you are causing so much more damage by over-tightening rather than under-tightening hardware. And don't forget, cases, covers, carburetor mounting bolts, starters, shrouds, manifolds, linkages, governors, they are such small magnetos. The hardware is tiny. It only needs to be snug and then one eighth or so of a turn more. Of course, when we're working with cylinder head bolts, when we're working with exhausts and manifolds like that, we do need to go a little bit tighter. But what I would suggest, get your torque wrench out. Find out what three and a half Newton meters feels like. Find out what five Newton meters feels like. Find out what eight feels like. And then use that when you come to working on that equipment. I can almost guarantee you're going way, way, way too tight. I have two. I've paid the price multiple times and I'm sharing it here openly with you guys online. If I can admit it publicly to thousands of people around the world, you can admit it to yourself. We have all overused sealants. We have used too much of it. We've used it inappropriately. We haven't let it set up in time and it's caused problems. Just the other day, I used a little bit too much sealant. It blocked the impulse drilling for the fuel pump and I wasn't getting good fuel pump. I was actually finding that at full throttle, it would lean out. I should know better. I have done this way too many times to still be making this mistake and yet I still am. Don't use too much. Also bear in mind that manufacturers will tell you how much you should use in terms of a bead size, for example. Have a look at the service manual, have a look at the technical data sheet, and it will give you that information. Also take heed to the advice of the cure times. Just because it might feel cured by squeezing it together and it's soft and it's not uh, sticky anymore, that doesn't mean that it's fully cured. It means that it's set, but it's not fully cured. That doesn't necessarily mean that that piece of equipment is ready to go back into use. You will find, especially with fuel applications, silicons don't tend to hold up too well until they're fully set. And even then they don't hold up the best. So do your research, use the right sealant or the right silicon for the application, ensure you're using the right amount and also let it cure for the appropriate amount of time. Don't part swap, don't throw parts at a problem that it's probably not going to solve. Much better is to stop when you're frustrated, take a breath, have a cup of tea, come back to it in a few hours with a fresh mind. More often than not, you're gonna find that solution without spending the money unnecessarily. Let me just add there though, if you are a small engine mechanic workshop, time is money and you just wanna get that piece of equipment in and out, I can see the value of throwing new parts on there where necessary. But that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the homeowner who has the time, who really, if they put just a bit more effort in, put a bit more thought behind what they're doing, they will discover that problem. And then in the future, they can rectify the issue very quickly. You don't have to wait for parts to arrive. You don't have to waste time searching and you don't have to spend money unnecessarily in the process. I've done this as well. It's embarrassing to admit. And uh, this video is more a reflection on me rather than anyone else, but hopefully you can learn in the process as well. Trying to be helpful in instances where you really aren't. Trying to give advice based off of what you've been told rather than what you've experienced. And actually all you end up doing is adding more unnecessary information to the person that's really trying to get help. I love helping people, I love teaching what I know, but that doesn't mean that occasionally I've probably shared things. No, stop, I have 
said things that either I haven't experienced myself that I've just heard, word of mouth, or I've given information based off of what I think it could be without really having as much knowledge as I should do on that subject. We can help each other more by being quiet or just being a bit more honest and saying, you know what, I haven't experienced that, I don't know, I'll let someone else chip in. It's small, it's uh, subtle, but actually that can make the difference between someone else chasing their tail for hours, spending money unnecessarily when they really don't have to. Learn from other people, let's try, and then talking to myself, trying to be helpful when you really haven't got a good knowledge on a topic is, uh, is not helpful at all. So there we go. They are the things, well, three and the bonus one, problems that uh, I have made, I see other people make, and I think if we can be a bit more honest with ourselves, I think it will go a long way in the long run. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed the video. Maybe it's allowed you to reflect on uh, yourself a little bit, on the engines that you're repairing at home, and how maybe you can proceed from here in a more beneficial way to yourself. And of course, on the subject of repairing engines at home, I have a video up here which is all about diagnosing two and four stroke engines in a methodical step-by-step -step approach. I hope you enjoy the video. I hope it makes your approach to repairing engines that little bit more streamlined and a little bit easier to do. Until next time, I'll catch you soon.